Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we're going to take a look at firing and employing the M120C AMRAM. Specifically from a kind of a more historical perspective of looking at uh, past AMRAM performance and comparing it to performance of the AMRAM in DCS World. I am an aviation historian and I've written many papers on aviation history and read a lot about how the AIM-120 was uh, employed in uh, Operation Southern Watch and Operation Northern Watch. So I hope my opinion will be interesting to you guys and this is also a bit of a remake from what uh, I created this morning. I made a rather glaring mistake and uh, Mr. Matt Wagner, kind of the god of DCS world, has uh, uh, pointed that out to me, and so I'm going to go ahead and remake this video. So I apologize to anyone who may have gotten a little bit of misinformation or um, got a little confused by my previous video. So I'm definitely not too proud to say when I made a mistake, and DCS World is a very complicated product, and it's all about making mistakes and correcting those mistakes. So we'll go ahead and jump in the cockpit and we'll get started. And we'll go ahead and take her out of autopilot. We'll push up the throttle just a little bit and then we'll go ahead and throw on the auto throttles for cruise. Bring the nose up just a little bit. And why don't we go ahead and select our M120s, put her into air to air mode, and we'll push our radar up just a little bit. And we'll narrow our azimuth just a little bit so that we don't get that kind of issue of uh, having the beam stuck on one side or the other. I still am having that bug a little bit but um, it's, it's been a lot better, that's for sure. So our master arm's on already, our countermeasures are good to go. So we can see that uh, our QF4 target out here is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock him up. This is basically the same setup that I did for my basic uh, air-to-air -air weapons and radar tutorial a few months ago, back when the uh, Hornet first released. In fact, this is the same mission that I'm using for this video. So um, a lot of people on the forums and multiplayer groups that I play with tend to think of the AMRAM as being almost like a magic bullet in a lot of ways, um, that it should hit something super far away, it should hit all the time, no matter what. And it's good to think of the AMRAM as really just another tool in our toolbox of weapons. And it's really important to remember that AMRAM stands for Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. You shouldn't expect an AMRAM to hit anything that you wouldn't fire a Sparrow at. It's just going to do the Sparrow's job much, much better than a Sparrow itself would. So we're going to go ahead and close with this F4. Now a lot of people tend to fire the AMRAM really far away from their targets, far too far. When you get the shoot cue, which only comes up at about 28 nautical miles at the furthest in my experience, that is still really, really far to shoot. To hit that target, that target's going to have to be coming at you quite fast, not be maneuvering at all, and you're going to have to have an altitude advantage on the target. But we're going to go ahead and fire a missile at this F4 at that far range just to go ahead and demonstrate the point. So, so far no shoot cue. Looks like our lock is glitching just a little bit. And you can see that we're not having nearly as much issue keeping our locks. I was maneuvered pretty violently there and we kept our lock just fine. So we'll push up the speed a little bit. Do 
give ourselves a little bit of an, more out of an altitude advantage. And there's our shoot cue. So we'll go ahead and fire the missile. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the missile. And we'll bring up the info bar so we can see the speed of the missile and see how quickly it drops that speed off as it's tracking that target. So we can see it's definitely losing its energy and it's definitely gonna fall out of the sky from this distance. Now, this happened a lot in real life, actually. Um, there are quite a few instances that you can read about um, in Operation Southern Watch where F-16s and F-15s would shoot an AIM-120 and the Iraqi MiG-23 or MiG-25 would simply turn around, light its afterburners, and just completely outrun the missile. And this missile was not designed, nor is any air-to-air -air missile really designed to um, overtake and track down an aircraft that's turning and running away from you in the exact opposite direction. So we're going to go ahead and close range with this set 4 and get into a better advantage to shoot him down, or a better position to shoot him down. You can see I'm not firing at him, even though I'm getting close. I'm at 13 miles, still not firing. You can also see that that F4 definitely had to go defensive, even though we knew that missile wasn't going to hit him. So if you're having an aircraft attack you, and we'll go ahead and fire the missile. And you need to just get him on the defensive. You can always fire a missile at him, and that you can use that as a tactic for BVR. So we'll go ahead and look at this missile. And we can see that this guy is not going to escape. You can see the missile still has a ton of energy. And splash one QF4. Alright, return back to, to search mode. And we'll go ahead and find that F-16. I guess that was a little bit more of a honorable death for that venerable F-4 than sitting in the boneyard for eternity. We're going to have to four bars. And we'll try to get gain some altitude. There we are. We'll go ahead and lock up that F-16, we can. So we've got our shoot cue, but once again, we're still pretty far away, so I'm going to let him close, especially with a very, very agile opponent like an F-16, or in a Soviet case, maybe a MiG-29. We'll wait a little bit farther. Let that missile have some more energy when it goes to turn against our turning opponent. And splash one QF-16. Once again, I guess it's a bit of a more honorable death than wasting away in the boneyard. And we'll go after this last QF4. There we go. Got him on the scope. Go ahead and lock him up. I think we missed him a bit. There we go. And he's right in that exact range.
and splash yet another QF4. Clear skies and tailwinds, Mr. F4. Cubby. Okay. So, in conclusion, guys, I apologize for messing up that video uh, the first time around. And once again, sorry to those 400 viewers that uh, may have gotten a little bit of misinformation. But uh, as you can see, there is a historical precedent for the way that AIM-120s work in DCS world. They're not a long-range hit-anything, anytime missile, the way it's per the AIM-120 is sometimes portrayed in defense media. Um, there's a lot of mis misinformation out there about BVR engagements and how far they occur. This is part um, manufacturer propaganda for these missiles, uh, potentially journalists who don't know what they're talking about completely, um, and lots of other factors as well, um, including simply not wanting to give out the exact characteristics of a missile to potential foes in the media or in other documentation. The AIM-120 is definitely a medium range missile, so anything about 25 miles under is fair game. You're going to want to stick to about 12 miles and under though if you really want to hit that target. Of course, you can fire a missile farther than that if you need to get your opponent on the defensive, but other than that, you're really going to want to wait till under 12 miles to actually get a kill with an AIM-120. It's good to think of the AIM-120 as really being an updated Sparrow. It's a Sparrow that you can fire and forget. So don't shoot an AIM-120 at something that you wouldn't shoot an AIM-7 at. And just like before, a lot of people are thinking the AIM-54 Phoenix is going to be the next magic bullet in DCS world. The Phoenix is just going to be another tool in our tool chest. You're not going to be hitting fighter-sized targets at 120 miles that are maneuvering. That's for a lumbering bear bomber over the ocean with no radar clutter in perfect conditions. So I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you learned something. And I hope that uh, you can forgive me for um, messing up the video on my first go around. So if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I would very much appreciate that. And uh, fly safe, guys.